Hey, how are you all going? This is Guy Battles from Metal Guy here with Crank.com and with ZapMetalStation.com. And today I'm getting to have a chat with Amaru and Roberto from Non Residents, who are due to release their album Against Police Brutality, yeah. 8th yeah. of October. <laughs> Cheers for joining me, guys. Yeah. Yeah. How are you, man? I am very, very good, man. Um, so first off, can you tell me how would you describe the the band Non Residents and the sound to someone who has not heard of you guys yet? So basically, we are in like metal band in kind of Pantera or Sepultura style, but we put a lot of like the hardcore and punk vibe. Uh, so it's like really good songs, powerful, but really simple at the time. And yep. it's have that like street vibe from, I don't know, from punk, hardcore, thrash metal in the 80s. No. Not too technical, more direct to the mosh pit. Aggressive. This is a... Uh, yeah. We, we want to make a... Uh, make a aggressive music and... Uh, for the mosh pit, you know, it's for our dance. And I love the mosh pit. We, we enjoy the mosh pit here a lot. Uh, and the people like it. It's cool. Yeah, it definitely has that thrashy sound. But like you said, it has that punch and that aggression with your vocals. It just gives it that, that little bit more and something different as well. Um, can you tell me a little bit first? I want to dive back. How did the band first originally start? Tell us about that. So we have a, a sequel band in, back in Chile yeah. that's called Thrash It. That's what our main project. Uh, so we decided to move to this United States to keeping in with the music way because there we, we don't get anything there back in Chile. It was so hard. And just me and my brother, uh, came here to New York. We tried to find a uh, new musician to keep the same project, the same songs. We have like uh, one album, one full album, and one EP. Like in Chile, we we thrashed it. Uh, but then we don't follow any musician to to keep the same project. So we decided to start a new band with new ideas, kind of the same vibe, the same goals but under a new name and new energies because we learn a lot here. It's, it's different, totally different. Yeah. So that's main that we start. Um, and about the name, we're thinking about a lot about the name. Oh, okay. This represents us now. Yeah, this good now. And then we get that it's a Puerto Rican musician that's called Residente, it's like resident. And I asked Roberto why he's called like that. I know because he's resident here in the state. Oh shit. So that was clear for us, like we are okay. non resident. We are non resident. This is uh this our life now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, it's cool. so 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 how how is that um whole process for you guys musically? Um, you know, you said that the Chile's a music scene is different. How are you finding the music scene there now, establishing this band and pushing forward? Because it looks like a fair bit of energy. And I looked at a little bit of the live stuff you guys had as well, and it looked really good. So how has that been for you, the process of moving there to here and musically inspiring you? Basically, it was um, here you have a lot of shows. Even New Year's have too many shows, too many bands. So... <laughs> When you go there, you want to go out there in, yeah, metal, punk, hardcore, anything. Yes, even. You watch like really good musicians. They have really good style, unique style. And it's the way on the, the city moves because it's really fast paced yeah. city. I think that's, it's gonna shape the style of people here. And that's made you like, you have to be quick. You have to be awake. You know, mm. you sleep. No, this city is not for you. So, <laughs> so 
in that way, it's going like to shape our music, our style here. We learn a lot about many things, technical things, uh, about the community, about a lot, a lot, a lot of shit that we didn't know. And we're still learning. We're still doing like things that we didn't know. We grow like a, in a farm back in Chile. Yeah. We're like kind of a farmer. So me here is like, oh shit, this a big city. Too much. For me, in USA, no, in New York, is uh, a lot of bands, a good bands. The level is very high. Uh, good crowd. The people, it's oh, amazing. Yeah. Support you a lot. And this is the most important. Really, the, it's the people. The people make your, your show, no? Uh, and you play a lot. You play two, three times in a month or more, if you can. Uh, we go to shows four times per week, three oh, times per week. Shit, yeah. Support all the all, our friends' bands. Uh, I make it community. It's just it, you know? It's yeah, more big eagles in the scene. Yeah, this is cool it's, now. It's just brotherhood, guys. Everywhere, no matter what, if you're like a big band, a small band, it's a really good community. Yeah, that is really good. How um, is that feel for you guys? Like, um, growing up there in Chile to, to where you are now, you know, what was it like growing up as brothers? When did you first get into heavy metal and when did you discover? that kind of music as well because i'm not is it was there a lot growing up as well tell us about some of your influences and growing up and being brothers and discovering heavy metal together yeah we started like rock and roll with pink floyd then i really like my first band when i, I play a song in the drums is acdc akadaka okay. you you said akadaka Yep, Akadaka. Akadaka. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Yeah. We uh yeah, this this <laughs> started with he started the main with uh the schoolmates. Yeah, they make a... uh and one of them guy was more like metalhead. He's discovered metal before us. And at, at the beginning it was like, no, no, that's too, too much for us. So was, they started with rock because I was younger at the time. And then Growing we dive in, in, into metal. Yeah. Iron Maiden first was like, okay, let's let's hear Iron Maiden. I'll say it. It's like no, rock it's, and roll. It's like, a demon. Yeah. <laughs> oh no, 666. Yeah. But then when, when really when when uh, we we were in a party, yeah, and one guy bring the uh, the Bulgar videos from Pantera, like the home videos, and say, oh, shit. All of, all of us want to do the same. Like I want to destroy the world like these guys. Teats, yeah. beers, <laughs> rocks, <laughs> rock and roll. Yeah, this. And I... then we dive into Exodus, Antrax, uh, Nuclear Assault. And that's why we are here now, because we love Anthrax. Anthrax is... Nuclear Assault too. Nuclear Assault too. It's SOD, like SOD. SOD, yeah. Yeah. And really, um, the last hour uh, trip in Chile, we discovered the hardcore scene, like a New York hardcore. And when come here, see a lot of uh, amazing bang of the, the hardcore style too. Uh, I don't know. We mix it with these guys. Yeah, yeah, we we grew up like in, in that part there. Yeah, but even a human metal that that was our beginning, like more in the stretch. We start with Pantera, but then we came like in, into Anthrax, yeah. Exodus. Yeah, it, it's really it's really good to see. It's for me. I love music as well, and it's funny to see the journey. But it's also great to see this journey as that music has played this much of an influence for you guys and here you are now in New York creating music and you've gone on this journey together to where you are now to this album against police brutality yeah and it's fine because in Chile I don't think now it's like that but when we start playing it was like 
here in the 80s, like, if you're punk, you are in your scene, if you're metalhead, you are in your scene, if you're hardcore, you're way further from that, you know, you don't mix it. Yeah. And if we have a, a show, a benefit show for a friend one time, that was like, he was punk, we were metalhead, so he bring punk bands, we bring our metal friends, and was all fight all the fucking show. <laughs> We start to we start to play and it was like few fights and then we start to fight with the with the promoter with the guy of the venue. Uh, no, it's uh, there is not a good idea. Out. Yeah, that's not a good idea. It's like yeah. no, you can mix it. But here, but here we learn that the people like listen to every music, every genre. So it's, that's cool. That's cool for us. Yeah, it is really cool, and it's good to see shows and bands. I can actually um, feel a little bit of your hardcore influences, and that's when I was probably saying a bit of that punch in the, the thrashy style that you guys have and the vocal delivery um, is really um, good. And it was great hearing that talk about how you've had the Pantera videos. that I did as a teenager as well, and that blew me away. It was I was drawing comparisons to your stories Um to, to mine as well growing up all the way over here in Australia and it just shows that we're all the same and how much music has influenced people all over the world regardless of where you are if I'm sitting in country Australia you're in country Chile our journeys are really a lot alike and we're ultimately all the bloody same the metal family who we are yeah that's great that's great it's worldwide wherever you are <laughs> I remember the first time when I uh uh, visit a, a bar, the name is Duff in New York, in Brooklyn. Uh, it's like my home, and always you, I feel like, uh, like in my home, it's like, oh, I mean, chill, no, no, but all people is the underground is seen, it's like a, the metal, the metal community is like worldwide, yeah, yeah, it's, it's cool, the same vibe everywhere. It is, and I want to talk about the album now against police brutality. When did you guys start? working on this album when is like we're gonna do this we start working the song like in generally 2020 2020 mm. yeah maybe we'll have some ideas we start to working on no in 2019 2018, sorry. 2018. we start to work in the ideas yeah uh we have a guitarist at the time the that come from Chile to play with us, but they have to leave and he go back to Chile. In that way, we start to play in jazz with bass, working on the songs, and then we met uh, our guitarist in a in a protest. Uh, there was a, a social uprising in Chile, so we start to making some protests at the time here in, in Times Square and Union Square here in New York City, and we meet our, our guitarist. He's, it's funny because he's not metalhead. He's like folklorist, he, he play like folk. He like, and he have a master in jazz, but he have like a really good attitude. It's like, he have like the metalhead attitude. He's like to bring, he's like destroyer. Like, so we start to play with Benjamin and everyone, every everything fits. Yeah. So we finished the songs at the time. Um, we started recording the, the the album. When you when you are uh, friends of your partners in the band, all fit. Yeah, yeah. Every, every, every so everything works, and the pandemic start, and we say like, oh shit, we can't stop, we can't stop. So we finish. All the details for the album while we we were doing quarantine, and then we start to recording uh, the album in the pandemic during the pandemic, and we're recording here in Brooklyn, Bushwick, in Invisible Realm Studio uh, with Oliver. He's a great guy. Uh, we were available to recording like week by week, like paying couple hours because we don't have money at the time we don't 
We don't have works. We don't have anything. Oh, with the pandemic, we have a yeah, the problem. Yeah, they strong. <laughs> but we're to do music, so we recorded like Orbit Power, and then the albums come, and it's amazing. And yeah. we have the grace that was mastered by Mauro Applebaum, that he mastered like Fade No More, Sepultura, Judas Priest, yes, so that was fucking this amazing. This guy is a magician. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it, it, it has a it has a great, great sound and it would have been a pretty surreal process making it through um, lockdowns and everything. And as you just mentioned um, about, you know, having to work week to week with sometimes with these albums, that's the state of the music scene at the moment all over. And it's, um, you know, that makes it more important for people to head over and kind of buy albums like this and go to shows, as you mentioned, and really support bands like non Resonance as they're going forward. Because if you love non Resonance, go buy the album and buy some merch as well, because it's not just about listening to it on your digital platforms. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Really now, this saved the bands, you know, the merch on the... Yeah. yeah. The, the albums, all the merch is important for us and for all the bands. We try to support the bands too, you know? It's like, oh, I go to see a, one, one from Anna, buy a shirt, buy a vinyl, buy a, but this is important for them. When you're in, the, in, in, in this, you know what's important is. Yeah, yeah, I do the same when I go to shows. I make sure I, um, I'm not much of a drinker these days, but I take a huge swag of money so I can buy lots of merch. That's my, my <laughs> thing. I do the same. I hit shows and I walk away with too many black shirts again and uh, <laughs> <some patches. laughs> But I, I absolutely love the, the heck out of it. Um, can I talk about the first single? We are the non we are non-residents. Tell me about that track there. It seems really quite fitting as the first single for sure. Yeah, it's like um a presentation card, this like really a statement. Uh, we try to to make clear that it's not like it's more that our like uh, migration status, you know, it's more like about that. Here in New York, we met people from Japan, we met people from South America, we met people from Australia too, we met people from everywhere. So this is like a community that don't feel part of anywhere, but you feel part of everything. It's like and there's no like, no, there's no discrimination. There's no flags that import. Yes, people. Yes, metal. Yes, music. That's why. That's that's the important thing. So we we try to put it that in the song. Like this, this what this is. What ah uh, who we are? Yeah, but maybe what, when we make the song, we don't think a lot. Of the important is for the people. It's the union. And when we released the, the single, all the people was like, cool, this, this song, uh, Talk for the Union. Represent me. Represent, uh, the people like it, it's cool. It, it, and we understand what important is the union in the, in the, in, in the music, in our music, you know? Uh, maybe a few times, the people uh, not uh, have too much union, but here, now, we, we feel it, we feel it. Uh, yeah, we have a really good, good, community uh good scene with the bands with the friend bands so no it's cool the people got the, the lyrics because kind of way was frustrating like writing in english in chile and no one can get the lyrics <laughs> no one can get the lyrics and here like the people oh pay attention to the lyrics what you say and they like it and that's that's fucking cool that's fucking cool they show they show us a lot of love, a lot of support. And yeah, that's that's the way that we, we want to move. Like, yeah, it has a good we message. Care. We don't care about who you are, where you are. If you are a good Paul, that's important. Yeah, we're all residents of the world. Sometimes I think we divvy things up too much and go, this is that country, this is that country. I like to say I'm a citizen of the world. You know what I mean? One, one yeah. world, one country. We're all alike regardless and I find this so many times in so many interviews with people 
all across the world. We're all just the same. We all want the same things. We all, you know what I mean? I just think sometimes, you know, when you hear, and then you hear music like this that kind of enforces that message as well. It, it, it just, it feels really good. Let's jump into the next single, Comfortably Tied. Oh, yeah. Tell us about that one. That one came, when we came here, we tried to put together a band, we, we have like two years that we yeah. did nothing. We don't find musicians. We were living in the, in the incorrect place. So we can get rich to anyone. And was in a moment that we feel like really comfortably with our life at the time. We have not a good job, but we have money to buy Sweet. food, clothes. Yeah, we have a house. We have a... We have, yeah, we have, have all drink more it is, you know. Bro. So we, we, Bro. Were, we were like, Same. <laughs> <laughs> we were like really comfortably at the time. We were like, but we, we don't, don't, we don't make music, you know. We are not doing music. It was like no. the time passed, you know. Okay, well, just like one year, two years. We did nothing. So it was like, shit, it's like a kick in the face and more fuck. You have to start to write lyrics. You have to start to write music. Mm. We'll put together that song. So it's like, this is not our best moment, but we try it and we keep trying, you know? Yeah, There's a lot of shit that at some point come to your head like, oh shit, I'm not doing this. I'm not doing exercise. I'm not learning this. I'm not doing this correct. But we stopped four years to play, you know? We, yeah, but the message, the main message is like, okay, I know, but we don't gonna stop. We yep. keep in this, you know, it's like, you have to go out and- And we learn this is the most important. It's not to stop playing and playing and playing and playing and playing. All your life, it's, it's our life, you know, it's our way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's our way. Yeah. It is. It is. It's for a lot of people as well, um, musicians, and not only musicians. People like me. It's like you, you work to 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 chase your passion of music. It's like kind of, you know, I've got a roof over my head. I've got food in my fridge, but and whatever dollar I get, I'm going to chuck back into my love and my passion <laughs> of music. Yeah. So you saw that at that time we don't have like guitarist. I'm the singer. He's the drummer. We don't play guitar. But I say, no, fuck, we can wait for something, someone to play guitar. So I write in the guitars there. I don't play guitar. But anyway, I write in the guitars. He make it work with the drums. And the next single, that This Is America, he do that, that song, the whole song. He did it. He yeah. write in the guitars and all the shit. But in the same moment, is it when? Yes, it's occurring in the same moment that both songs, that we have to do something. Yeah, this is fucking great songs. It's not like, you didn't know that someone that not play guitar doing it. Yeah, well, I, I didn't really, know. Well, it's really good. It's important for us, like, uh, make a simple songs, but uh, we think like uh, in the new metalheads, in the new hardcore guys, and new punks, it's like uh, the youngers, the the the, the child. This is important. Now the people, the the young uh, guys, uh, just consume a uh, pop uh, <laughs> and games. Uh, yeah that's it man i we think uh the new generation need new music like that yeah. new music uh we definitely need to everywhere yeah so this basically is not excuses if you want the music you want the metal you can do it and go for it go for it yeah exactly and to get your music non-residence.com i believe is your website people can head over and grab some merch and music as well yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I, I gotta put. I always love to put in that about support. It's my thing. Um, support. Um, and getting along and buying music and supporting Ooh, bands uh, like you, yourself. And to not to mention the show as well. You have a release show coming up because the album does drop eighth of October, and I believe October tenth is at the Knitting uh, yeah, Factory in Brooklyn. Brooklyn. Yeah. We're so stressed, but really happy. It's chill. We get a, a really good venue here in Brooklyn. It's a big venue. It's a challenge for us. 
uh, we try to carry a fucking good show. Can you hear us? Yep. Just a little okay. jump there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There's the joys no, of I, interviews I, across the world, but that's the thing. We get to have these conversations and you're sitting yeah, yeah. there and I'm all the way here in Australia. I really did get a lot out of your music. Um, I love the album. I love the message. And I even love the little um, little notes of your, your heritage as well through Chile, the little pipes and things like that as well in there as well with the start and oh, the yeah. other track you got in there as well. It's, um, it's a great album. I think people need to go over and check you guys out. And if they like you, they need to buy the album. Also get along to your show on October 10th. Did you brothers have any last words, um, shout outs or thank yous you'd like to add in there before we wind up? Yeah, now thank you. I think the people who's watching this, yeah. go for it, go to YouTube. We have our first video that we have normal residents there. Coming more videos up. Uh, check it out the album, check it out the singles. Yeah, we are very uh, we are active in the social media. Yeah, follow us Instagram. on Instagram mostly, Facebook, all the shit. We have to talk. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we're an open platform. Yeah, yeah. Uh, thank you guys. We want to play in uh, Australia. So when we get papers, yeah. <laughs> yeah, when we get papers, we go to Australia. We go to Australia. It <laughs> would be great to have you guys here in Australia. You'd be welcome any day, and I would have a beer Ooh. with you and be moshing out front row center. Um, non residents Against Police Brutality does drop 8th of October. They have the album release show October 10th at the Knitting Factory in Brooklyn. Yeah! Get along, support your band, support your scene. Thank you very much for joining me, boys. It's been an absolute pleasure. See you guys. Nuestras raíces no han muerto, no han desaparecido. Estamos vivos. <laughs>